President Trump will decide whether to continue waiving economic sanctions on Iran that were suspended under the 2015 Iran nuclear deal. If he reimposes the sanctions, some fear the delicately crafted multilateral deal could crumble. There's been a lot of speculation over how Trump's decision might affect an already tense Middle East. So Iran is certainly an ascendant power in the Middle East. Uh, it is wielding a lot of influence in Iraq through its proxies. It has helped support the government of Bashar al-Assad in Damascus and now has military forces of its own in Syria. It is strengthening its longtime ally Hezbollah. And it's also supporting rebels in Yemen who overthrew the government. And that's causing a great deal of anxiety for Israel, for Saudi Arabia, and for the United States. Since before the election, Trump has framed repealing the Iran nuclear deal as a key selling point to his base. My number one priority is to dismantle the disastrous deal with Iran. It was kind of one of the centerpieces of his complaints against the uh, Obama administration that the United States had given Iran a bunch of money and had got nothing in return. The Obama administration maintained that it is better to have a deal that will change the equation on a nuclear weapon. I remember at the time, the time at which Iran was expected to be able to have enough fissile material to make a nuclear weapon was a matter of months. The agreement, by all accounts, extended that to a year or more if Iran were to break the agreement. President Trump takes issue with something called the Sunset Clause. These are 10-year, uh, 15-year deadlines after which certain provisions of the deal cease to be in effect. Some of those say that uh, Iran can restart portions of its nuclear energy program, which it has always said was not to build weapons, but others have said was to build weapons. It will still have restrictions on it in terms of uh, commitments to never build a nuclear weapon. Countries in the Middle East have large stakes in the fate of the deal. Israel has good reason to be concerned about Iran. For starters, uh, many of the officials in Iran have never recognized Israel's right to exist. And Iran continues to build up its strength militarily um, and is acting in an ever more brazen fashion towards Israel. Saudi Arabia and Iran are rivals uh, for influence in the Middle East. They represent rival religious camps, and the, the Saudis were, were quite apprehensive about the nuclear deal that President Obama had negotiated. In the weeks leading up to his decision, leaders from France, Germany, and Britain all visited the United States to urge Trump to sign the waiver and stay in the deal. The waivers question will come up again, the current ones will come up again in 120 days. There are others that come up every six months that will come up again in July. And so I think what the Europeans would like, they want to get rid of these, these constant triggers. If Trump chooses to reimpose the sanctions, it might not have an immediate effect. But Iran has said the U.S. would face grave consequences if he does. If President Trump were to withdraw the United States from the nuclear deal, it would continue to ratchet up the tensions we're already seeing in the region. Um, if Iran decided that it no longer needed to um, refrain from building a nuclear arms program, for instance, by expanding the technology that it would need to, to develop weapons-grade material. We could very well see the U.S. or perhaps Israel take military action against Iranian targets, and that could lead to all-out war. Sometimes left out of the global discussions is the fate of the Iranian people. The Iranian people really don't want a confrontation, and they don't necessarily see a nuclear program as, as a priority. On the other hand, it may be the case that the Iranian government feels that international confrontation is just what's needed to take the people's minds off their economic straits.